what are the traps in the path of spirituality? So I have already explained part of it. One is mind and mind's projections. These are traps of spirituality. Because mind will keep on entertaining you. And mind will ask, hey, there is no activity. Mind will pray for activity. Activity is not going to take you spiritually. It's just entertainment for the mind. Silence will take you spiritually higher. Not mind, not the activity. We think that one course after another course after another course will make you higher and higher. It is just occupying the mind. As I said before, yesterday, one, one very, very important criteria or very, you can use it as yardstick to know where you stand spiritually. It is, it is important to know how much silent you are with it through time. Not, in, not situationally. In certain situations, if nobody is talking to you, you are very peaceful. That is different. But are you silent through every situation? Sometimes you will be silent in one, silent in the sense like peaceful within. In one situation, but in other situation you are completely agitated. That's not what I'm saying. So where you stand spiritually is that how much silence you have acquired within. Just write silence, and that is exactly one yardstick that you can. If you if you do activity, if you attain silence, please do that. No problem. Second is fearlessness. This is a very very important point to note. If you are completely spiritual, if you are completely silent, you are absolutely fearless. Fear will have no meaning in your life. And, and all the associated aspects of fear, such as insecurity, such as anxiety, all these things will wash, for sure, get washed out, long ago. So, these are two important criterions which you can definitely look for. Second point is, so I said mind. Mind is the main thing. Mind is what is creating the waves and keep, keeps you entertained and also keeps you go up and down. So this is the factor. So very important to know. Second is ego. And ego is another factor which sometimes we don't know that we, it, it exists until it starts manifesting in multiple forms. So beware of ego. And man minus ego is equal to God. Please understand this. Very clearly, man minus ego is equal to God. So the wall between man and God is ego. So if we are very clear about it, we will always keep a watch on ego. How do you keep a check on ego? Very, very small things you can practice. Always tie your ego to your intellect. You know, your intelligence, the discriminatory factor that you have in you. Mind also sometimes go heavers. Tie the mind also to the pole of Intellect. Intellect is, is, a, is the reasoning element in you. So if, if always you are operating with intellect, ego will be less and also mind will be in control. You cannot control mind directly. Mind will create all sorts of problems. But if the mind is under the control of intellect, you are safer. Things will be fine. Also understand one thing. Whenever emotion is in, is in control, whenever the mind is in control, invariably regrets happen. Like you become angry, you shouted at somebody, then you go back and say, I, I should not have done that. So that time where was intellect? Whenever you become agitated, whenever you become angry, whenever you become impatient, you are locking the intellect inside a room. It's not available. It's not available. If intellect was available, you will not have regrets. Because if intellect will say, no, don't mess it, leave it. You know, it's not, it's not worth spending time, it's not worth spending energy. So, it's like that. It's just like our emotional purchase. We saw in the supermarket, if you buy two, you get one free. You wouldn't even care whether you need that stuff. But that makes your emotion work and you bring this home. Then you realize it was absolutely a useless purchase. Same, same way. If mind or if intellect was available, they will say, first question, do you need that stuff? Even if you need, you need three of those. You know. So, such questions will come. And, and eventually you will say, no, I don't need it anymore. So, this is the faculty. Then third are sensations. In the traps and the path of spirituality, you will get more and more sensations each time. Because, oh, I, I did pranayam, hyperventilation. Suddenly I felt light. Very good. No problem. But then again you are becoming gross afterwards. So, sensations are short and temporary. Don't hang on sensations. Go beyond sensations. Because sensations also have another problem. They make you, they ask you for a petition. I had this sensation yesterday. I get many mails like that from people. 
Mohanji had tremendous experience when I practiced this meditation for one week. But I am not getting that now. Is there any problem with me? You know, this always happens. It's not a problem with you. You are growing above it. Would you like to sit in the same class all the time? You know, they will have to make you the teacher later. <laughs> Even the teacher doesn't know so much. So basically sensations are not uh, to be uh, caught on. Leave sensations. Let the sensation happen. Enjoy it at that time. Go further. You have to go beyond sensations and everything. And to reach the level of stillness where you are one with everything. So sensations is under trap. Then it's the wrong understanding. We, we have wrong understanding. We sometimes think ritual means spirituality. It's not so. Rituals, uh, meditation, all these tools that we have, we have prescribed in various times, they are all to take you to God. So God is the final destination. Or you are to be one with God. Everything else are tools or, or uh, things which will take you to, to, towards God. So, but if you, if you desire that the tool is the God, then it's, there's, no, there's no point. Sometimes we fall into rituals and we believe that this is exactly what, is, what we have to do. People come and tell me, oh, if I don't do my usual morning uh, ritual, I, I get a headache. I said, you are a slave to it. You know, this is actually a binding. This is not what spirituality is. Spirituality is about liberation. You do a puja or a practice if you have to do, but that should not bind you. And also, whatever you repeat becomes a subconscious activity. You are not going to be benefited from it. Whatever you repeat, like it's a, like a habit which you form, maybe a person started smoking, the first cigarette was enjoyable, then, it, then, the, then after the first packet, it's just a routine. I don't think he's enjoying any cigarette because his mind is elsewhere. It's a mechanical activity, body triggers it, and then you smoke. So like this it goes, you know, and then, then you feel, okay, I spoke, it's fine. Then I need another one because you, you were not here when you were smoking. Mind was elsewhere. So repetition happens, right? This is how rituals are formed. And then that binds you and that kind of... Uh, uh, takes your freedom away. So, it, it is not about uh, the anything which is ritualistic, whether it is uh, any habit, any meditation, anything. Think over it. If it is worthwhile, continue. But, I am not saying that drop something because you, are, you want to escape from it. That's not so. Study it, analyze it, it's worthwhile. Am I getting more and more silence by doing it? Do it. Definitely do it. If you are achieving more and more silence by any activity, do it. Because this is exactly what we are looking for. In the silence, you hear the footprints of God, the footsteps of God in silence. So when you attain absolute silence, you are one with God. So whatever take it, it takes to achieve that, please do it, no problem. But wrong understanding always takes it, it, it makes you go into detours. You know, no God or no Guru is looking at what you do, how much empty you are is the only criteria. <laughs> Are you filled up to here? No guru can give you anything. You know, a guru is sitting to take you to the highest point if he can help it, if you allow it to happen. This is important to understand. So if you are going to a person of a higher nature, use that chance so that you can climb 10 more steps. You know, not, uh, not ask him to clean the toilet. <laughs> you know, see this is what is happening in today's spirituality. That is why there is no progress. Wrong understanding, wrong understanding. We created our destiny. You know, use the chance to get out of it so that you are detached from all this and you are connected to God. Your path is clear. This is very important to know. So, wrong understanding is one of the main det detrimental factors. Then, one is conditioning. You know, we have acquired conditionings. We think that this is the right way to pray. That again, I, I will tell you a story. In an island, there were three people and they decided amongst themselves, we will find God. Until then, we will not do anything. The three of them went into a cave on top of a mountain and sat there, and they, but they didn't know any, any prayer. You know, their only intention was, in this life I should find God, be one with God. That was the only intention. But uh, uh, the, there is no ritual or prayer there. So they said, we are three, and uh, 
we are after God. This is their prayer. Their chanting was, we are clean and we want God. They kept on chanting this for a long time. And one, one bishop was coming from another place to this island to uh, talk to the people there. So while uh, they, he was giving a lecture about Bible and various aspects, uh, some people said, look here, there are three people sitting up there on top, maybe <laughs> chanting something which we could understand. Can you please uh, help them to find God? Bishop said, yes, I am interested to meet them. So they took the bishop there. Then they asked, what are you doing? So they said, we are chanting to find God. They very good. What do you chant? Then we are free, we want God. So bishop said, that's a very wrong mantra. If God will not come with that kind of mantra. So he explained the full way how to pray. What, what are the rituals? How, how should you pray so that you can, God can come to you? So they agreed with all this because somebody is guiding them. Then Bishop left. Then between these three people there was confusion. Did the Bishop say this one first or <laughs> they started arguing? You know, they said no, no. One guy said no. Bishop said this is the way to go. And I said no, no. He said the other way around. So they, they had, so they said let's catch him again. They ran. By the time the bishop was leaving in the boat, you know, the boat was already in the sea. These people ran over water and reached him. And then when the bishop looked at him, he said, how did you come? He said, we came to ask you, did you say this one first or? <laughs> then the bishop said, forget it, you already arrived. <laughs> I, I cannot do what you did. <laughs> you see? So God is not looking at the right way or wrong way, whether you are able to connect, you are able to keep your heart free and empty and you are sincere in what you do. Whatever you do, are you sincere in it? Are you fully dedicated in it? If that is the thing, God will come to you. You don't need a priest in between to reach God. You know, because you are already one with God. This is the truth. You already are one with God. You do not need a middleman to tell you what to do. But if you spontaneously feel like doing something, please do, because you are guided. You are... So, many conditionings are up to be dropped to get to feel God. If you want to get to feel God, you may have to drop many things which you are already practicing. And many people practice something for themselves. This is wrong. I always tell people, do not practice. He said, okay, if I chant this so many times, will I get have this result? That's a wrong way of approaching spirituality. I would say chant for the sake of chanting. Let the results happen. Because we do not know what is good for us. The higher beings know. So allow that to happen. You know, we will ask for a bicycle, but probably you are eligible for a Rolls Royce. You know? <laughs> with our, our capacity, we can only ask for a bicycle. <laughs> but maybe you are eligible for a Rolls Royce, but let it happen, you know. And sometimes when you when you when you get closer to God, you will experience lots of calamities. There are many many people have asked me, I, I get closer to a guru. A lot of problems are happening in life. These are removals, please understand. Things are speeding up, things are getting removed. So what happens is it intensifies. If you are supposed to take if you are supposed to take ten lives, it, it may probably get crushed into two lives. Because you are getting closer to the source. The consciousness. So sometimes calamities will come and go. Just hold on to the faith. Stay firm with the faith. Never ever deserve. You know, as I said, you know, you take your time to understand a guru or accept a guru, but then whatever happens, hold on. There is a saying, when you pray to Lord Krishna, you any 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 Lord God you can pray, this say. When you pray to Lord Krishna and when you get closer and closer to him. First thing he does is he kicks you. You know, first you get kicks. You know, you're trying to touch the feet, but you get a kick. Then you feel, oh my God, I wanted grace and blessing, but he's kicking me. You become disturbed. That is a test. But even with the kick, oh thank you, Lord, you kicked me. I'm I'm saved. If that is the attitude, then the next is embrace. Next is hug. So this is the point. So you have to sometimes go through these regards of life and then you connect to God fully. Then you are one with God. So conditioning has to be dropped. You should be spontaneous, 100% spontaneous. Just be fluid. Just flow. What comes your way, enjoy it. And keep flowing. Then everything will be provided to you. Everything will fall in your plate. 
This is how it works. And then the distance between liberation and binding. I tell you in spirituality, it's very simple. Don't complicate it. Whatever liberates you, accept. Whatever binds you, reject. Simple. Anything that binds you, reject it. It's not worth it. Somebody says, tells you, these, these rituals if you, you should do. If you don't do, you will go to hell. Thank you very much. We are already in hell. <laughs> you know, there is no more hell than here. Isn't it? So, anything that liberates you, takes you forward one more age, accept it. Because this is all about liberation. Our whole philosophy is about liberation. Liberation from your daily mundane habits to the, the liberation when you are leaving the body. You are completely free. You are born free, you should die free. And not bound and, and captured and conquered and victimized. This is not worth it. So no spiritual path, no uh, 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 books or whatever that binds is not free. I, I would say drop it. Whatever liberates, accept it. So this is the sign of the white, side, white path. The white path is all about liberation. Whatever binds you is not at all good for your progress because you are rotating in a circle under some reason. Then the last thing, but uh, it's very important, you can probably control your anger provided you are watching it. You can probably control your hatred because you can see through it and drop it. But expectation, what do you do? Very difficult. I ex expect him to behave like this. I expect that the light is on all the time when I'm here. Or I expect, I can expect anything I like. But understand each expectation is a binding. Even the image of your face that you see in the mirror is a binding. That is why we have all, the, all these cosmetics we sell. It's making huge money, right? The cosmetic manufacturers make a lot of money because we don't like changes, right? White hair comes, we have here perturbed. It's a problem. So the black color comes here. <laughs> you see, like this we go. This is again binding. Understand? We have to flow, keep flowing, be natural. Because those who look at you, your image and loves you will, will not love you anyway after some time. You know? Those who accept you the way you are will always accept you. That will be very few. So don't try to bend backwards for the society. Be yourself. So you will get the right type of friends and the company at the right time. They may change. Allow them to change. You know, there is a saying in spirituality. You can measure your spiritual progress by the way of dropping away of your friends. You know, sometimes it's said as a joke, but it's a truth. Many people will think this man is crazy, he's sitting and meditating. I'm meeting him in the pub. You know, so they will say bye bye. I'm not worth it, not worth your company anymore. So you can get lots of people if you drink alcohol because they like that. But when you sit and meditate, with you. Say, what are you doing? Why are you so quiet? Why are you silent? Let's go for a movie. Because mind likes activity. You know, silence means lack of operation of the mind. Mindless state. So, it is important to know that the mind always likes to, like you to move, to do something. So, accept yourself as you are, the way you are, and, and, and think that uh, People who are, who are supposed to connect you will connect you the way you are. And these are real friends. Not expecting something and loving you based on the expectation. They are not real. They will go away someday, sooner or later. And let them. This is better for you. And if you try to cling on to them, then it's pain. So if you do not flow, stagnation is always pain. Stagnation, I, I call stagnation is death. Stagnation is pain. So I would say that you evolve. Let there be new friends coming in. Let there be new vibrations, new awareness. And I always tell people, every five years, reinvent yourself. Be somebody else. Be somebody else means not changing your old thing. But be bold enough to create a new you. That keeps you fresh and young. Then many people will go away. Oh, I expect you to do like that, but you change. They don't like changes, you know. You know, and then another thing is that, as I have said earlier, people do people only like relative truths. They do not like real truths. And if somebody is consistently talking real truth, they'll crucify them. 
because we are used to relative truths. We are only, we, in this existence, we only understand relative truths. Everything is in relation to something else. Correct? And we are following and we think this is the real truth. The real truth is that you are one with God. And if I say, I am God, Aham Brahmasmi, next day you can see me on the cross. Because this, this, if you look at the history, the history is full of that. A, a living saint who always spoke the truth with the day is crucified. But those who compromised or said something which to suit the correct current society, they were, they were allowed to leave. You know, on conditions. So society cannot understand the absolute truth, nor accept it, nor respect it, and uh, uh, practice it. So this is also very important to understand. Again, it's our conditionings. Our conditioning says only relative truth exists. In relation to morning, there is evening. You know, there is, uh, like I was uh, asking one of the child, boy of five, 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 five plus. He said he's studying in school. I asked him, can I ask you one question? Can you answer? He said, sure. Where does the sun rise? So he said, east. I said, where is east? The earth is turning. Then he said, oh, you don't know that? I said, no. He said, where the sun rises is the east. I said, that is correct. You know, because the earth is moving, wherever the sun rises has to be the east. But you cannot say this location is east on earth, right? Because it changes. It's a subtle difference, but it's a clear understanding. You know, so I said, now you are right. Because earlier what you said is, sun rises in the east. So this is the way we go. So control expectations. Expectations must be, control the sense, see through it. Hey, am I am I am expecting too much? This is creating pain in me. And do I need the pain? No. We are not here for pain, we are here for happiness. If you ask the 7 million people in the world, why, why are you here? They will say for happiness. So, why don't you marry happiness? For which you may have to go through your, your to, to understand yourself, understand your nature, the weaknesses, the strengths, and accept everything, and also understand your expectations, levels of expectations.